Thank you all for watching. Make sure you smash that like button. Subscribe to our channel. Hey. hey! Welcome to Waterbox Live, everybody. On a we surprise Friday. A surprise Friday. It feels a little weird. Make sure you guys <laughs> smash that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell because we're here twice a week. Yeah. So, yep. there's no intro, so we're not getting it started. <laughs> no, no, it really, we need, I say it every week, we need an intro because that's, that's just how it's supposed to you be. You already started it. We, I already started it. Kenan doesn't want an intro for our LX build show, so just so you know. But, um, so we're working on the LX, we're continuing the, mm -hmm. the setup and the talking of how to set up a large reef aquarium. And, you know, we're now going to talk about how to pick your equipment and what's important. Oh yeah, but we can't forget about giveaways, gift cards. <laughs> So yeah, we're giving away a hundred dollar gift card at the end of this episode. So make sure you stick around, ask us questions, answer other people's questions, so on and so forth. Yep. As well as during this, at the end of this series, we're giving away a Reef LX 190.4. You heard that right. Huge prize. Yep. So you can go here on the website, and it's going to tell you more about it. Um, so it's the Reef LX 190.4. And then um, here is where you can enter information, and there will be actions for you to get more entries. And, you know, social media interactions, mm -hmm. website, um, swag, all that stuff. And also, for all those that are watching live, you get a keyword dropped randomly yep. throughout the show that you actually will get you some more so Make sure you listen out for there. that. Give you a bonus entry code. It's 10 additional entries. Yeah. More chances to win. So... Um, Plus, definitely. someone's walking away with a $100 gift card today. Yes, they are. So get yourself some nice water box stuff with that. Um, yeah, so we're planning the equipment for 320.7 LX uh, that we've been doing this series on. And there's a lot of equipment for a large reef aquarium. You kind of have to be prepared, know what you're looking for, why you need certain things, and how to pick mm -hmm. which one you want to use. Um, so we kind of made up a little presentation showing yep. you what equipment that you need and why and how to size it and all that stuff so right and also guys keep in mind too that you can do this far before you even purchase your aquarium if you know what aquarium you're going to buy yep. you can do this planning process we just so happen to want to get the lx here ahead of time so yeah well, we've had equipment <laughs> for a while too yeah actually the equipment did come before the lx oh it did see so we pre-planned just, <laughs> just forgot because it's been in a box for a while um so let's get it started. Nope, not. We're not. We're not getting it started. Nope. Hold on, I just we're out. Oh. Okay. We're not getting started yet. Yeah. So we're, he's Technical gonna get the uh, the audio fixed on our presentation here. Uh, but essentially, what we're gonna go over, you guys, is the return pump, the power heads, the skimmer, the mini reactor, the lighting, the ATO, the heater, and any electrical needs. These are all things you have to consider. Yeah. especially, I mean, with any aquarium, but especially this large. Yeah, so I mean, it's things that you just can't go without. Certain ones don't have to be added right away, so if you need to, you know, kind of sequence them out, that's an option as well. But these are all things that is the backbone of a large reef aquarium that you have to have um, as you get going with it. And it's just things, you know, everything in the bigger aquarium, the bigger list of equipment. Yep. So, but, you know, doing it right from the beginning, get the proper size return pump, get the good power heads, get the good, you know, big skimmer is going to make such a difference long term. Absolutely. Because if you don't do it right the first time, you're going to buy it the right one later and you're going to be spending a ton of wasted money. So, yeah. you know, plan it out. That's why we've planned it out. Do it right and then yeah. you're going to be a lot happier. Also, too, when you're planning your aquarium, which model you're going to get, consider this equipment into your budget as well. Um, because it is a substantial portion of the purchase. Yeah. So you got to make sure, you know, that you're in line with what you want to spend, so on and so forth. Um, and I do want to mention, too, before we jump into this, that what we're showing you today goes in line with our blueprints. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, on most of our models, uh, we'll be releasing some very soon on the Reef LX, but we, we have blueprints. So it's basically going to give you we did the homework for you. We're going we're gonna to show you what protein skimmer matches perfectly. Yes. We're going to show you the power heads, return pumps. We've pre-bundled rock for you from Carib C, simplifying all these things. And we call them blueprints. So it's the blueprint to set up your water box. It's so easy, too, because you don't have to think about it. You know, we're tailing off of and all the different models have a blueprint mm -hmm. is what you for that model. You should use um, your rock bundle, all this stuff. So you 
really don't even have to go researching and thinking this is what we know works for these models mm -hmm. um, and for what you want to do. So, um, like I said, like the simplest that you can get without right. even having to thinking about it. But for those with the larger aquarium, and even I mean, this information that we're doing through the day is the same basic information you're going to need for any aquarium and picking yeah. out your equipment. Um, you know, we're just it's based upon size, so you're going to see our suggestions are going to be for, of course, a larger aquarium. Okay, so we're going to change the plans. We're going to run the presentation from here. Okay. So that I make sure that I get your audio. Okay. Um, we'll follow along and we'll switch the track as we go. Okay. Cool. We're not controlling it anymore. Okay, no worries. Perfect. So All let's right. go ahead and get it started with the overview. Let's go ahead and get it started. So overall, the equipment to consider, like we just went over, return pump, power heads, protein skimmer, media reactor, lighting, auto top off, heater, and then also electrical needs that you need to consider. And if you hear us say ATO, guys, that means auto top off. It's just a abbreviation, I guess. So return pump, um, the return pump pushes the water throughout your system from the sump up to the aquarium and is then forced down through the overflow back to the sump. This is basically number one thing that you have to have when you set up an aquarium, if your water's not flowing otherwise. Recommendations, general rule of thumb is five to seven times turnover of the water volume per hour with your return pump. It's the lifeblood of the aquarium. It is. So the model that we're going to be using on the Reef LX320.7 is the Ecotech Vectra L2 with the barb and screen kit. A few tips whenever you're picking out a return pump is using a return pump that pushes greater than that five to seven times turnover per hour will lessen the contact time of water with your skimmer, reactors, and media. Faster is not necessarily better. Excellent. So, so, one other thing, kind of like I will kind of say afterwards is like, when you need certain pieces of equipment, the return pump, you can't have it. It's before lights, it's before everything else. So if there's one thing you buy to set up your aquarium, it has to be the return pump. Yep, the Vectra is a great option for that as well. Right. Um, so the next thing that you guys are gonna to wanna to consider is your power heads. Flow within the aquarium is extremely important. So the purpose of the power heads, to provide additional flow inside the display aquarium, having proper flow inside the aquarium is critical for core health as well as facilitating removal of detritus from the aquarium. Um, our recommendation flow needed for, from power heads will vary depending on the type of coral in your aquarium and the placement of the power heads. You can add anywhere from 10 to 30 times turnover with power heads. So, Again, get your flow from the power heads, not from the return pump. Right. What we're using on the Reef LX, as we use in our blueprints, is the Ecotech nope. Marine MP60s. There's a little error there. We're using the MP60s. It's the biggest uh, power head they have on the Vortec line. The tip, some tips when using the controller power heads, like the MPs or the AI Neros, allow for more Versatile, versatile power flow patterns and more natural flow for coral. So with power heads, like timing of when you need them is, I mean, technically you don't need them for a while a lot mm -hmm. of times. Uh, as you get more coral in there, you start putting more sensitive corals that need more flow. However, the earlier you put them in, the easier it is going to be to keep the nutrient export with them. It's going to keep your tank cleaner. Um, yeah. And then you can kind of work on your flow patterns before you have a lot of corals in there and then you just throw a lot of random flow. Yeah, into it's it. not linear in any sense of the means. You can adjust your flows, things in your aquarium grow and change, you change your aquascape. Mm -hmm. um, and don't underestimate the, the need for lots of flow, especially in a reef aquarium. Yeah, low flow and not having enough power heads is going to allow a lot of dirt to settle on the sand in your rock. You're going to have phosphate and nitrate issues more algae problems. Um, so while, as you may say, I don't really need the power heads now because I don't have corals, while technically that's true, it's extremely beneficial to start them earlier. Yep. All right, protein skimmer. So the purpose, um, a protein skimmer mixes very fine air bubbles with the aquarium water to remove waste, food, particulates, and organics from the water, resulting in less waste being broken down in your aquarium. Recommendation. Go as big as the space and budget allow. Skimmers are rated by bio load and gallons. Always base your selection on high bio load and gallon size of full system volume. Model we're using for the Reef LX320.7 is the NIOS Quantum 300. It's rated for 250 to 1,000 gallons, uh, depending on the bio load. Very big skimmer. This is a beast. It is. So for tips, skimmers require a break-in period usually lasting one to two weeks until reaching um, optimal performance. During this time, slowly close the water level adjustment knob until it reaches steady foam production and collection. 
So a lot stuff. of times people do freak out when they put a skimmer in and it's just blowing bubbles into the system and it's not creating foam. It does take a while for them to run even. Mm -hmm. um, they have to create a biofilm basically within the skimmer that allows the bubbles to build properly. And then as far as how, when you need a protein skimmer, as soon as you really have livestock in there. Yeah. If you don't want to push it out, you're going to get dirtier water, then you're going to be fighting more of a battle. So get in there um, at the time of or before you add livestock. I do want to mention that's the largest protein skimmer that NIOS makes, um, and it will be available very soon on all of our websites. It's huge. I was carrying it earlier, and I was like, this is it. <laughs> I was walking across. I was like, if I it's, drop it's it, I'm in trouble. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a really, really nice system. Again, we did the homework for you. So um, next thing that you're going to want to consider, you guys, is a media reactor. This is really important. The purpose of a media reactor forces water. A media reactor forces water to pass through media of your choice. This increases the effectiveness of the media by ensuring water is not bypassing it. Our recommendation, go a size up on your reactor. It's better to have extra space in it than having too much media crammed into a smaller reactor. The model we're using for the 320.7 is the NIOS Torque 2.0. These are really great reactors. Our tip, best to use media not in a media bag to allow more even flow through. If you must use a media bag, make sure the bag is large enough to allow ample flow through it. So there you go, the NIOS Torque. Yep, and when to, act, when to add a media reactor. Um, really at any point in time, you're gonna be running carbon or phosphate media pretty early on with your aquarium. Um, it's easier just to go ahead and get the reactor and have it running, um, but you don't have a specific point that you have to use one. Good stuff. All right, next on our list is lighting. It's a very important topic. This is, um, you know, essential to the corals and stuff like that. So purpose is corals require a certain intensity and spectrum of light to properly grow and maintain color. Without proper lighting, coral will not survive. Uh, recommendation? LED lights are the most popular in the hobby due to the controllability, spectrum, low heat production, and longevity of the bulbs. The type of coral you keep will determine what intensity of light you need. Models we're model we're using for the Reef LX320.7. We have four Ecotech Radeon XR30 G5 Blues and some bad boys. That I can't is. wait to put them on there. Um, great lights for a large aquarium. Tips, invest in your lights as it is one of the most important factors for coral growth and health. That, that last tip there is so incredibly important when you go to choose lighting, find a reputable manufacturer that's doing it for a long time. Ecotech, Marine, yes. they do lighting. So, you know, it's, it's a great company. They're, they're here in the US, they have great support. Um, it's very controllable, so you want to get a product that's going to not only have safety behind it, but mm -hmm. also support. So. It's one of those things, like, and you have to have lights by the time you put any corals in there, but it's one of those things that if you don't buy the best that you can in the very beginning, no lights are cheap. So if you go for the cheaper option, um, you're still spending a good decent amount of money, and you're going to come to find out that it's not the best option. Your corals aren't growing as well. You're going to see the recommendations for mm -hmm. the rent. And then you're going to go and spend so much more money to repurchase the yeah. initial light. So um, don't skimp on it. Your corals are nothing without light. Yeah, and I will say that the Ecotech Radions are one of the most widely used LED lighting systems in the world. They're used in tons of coral farms. Mm -hmm. They're tried, true, and tested. Yeah. So if you're considering it, it's a no-brainer in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, the next thing that you guys will need to plan for especially a large system like this i made mistakes with this early on i'll never do it again is auto top off yep so the purpose they replenish water lost from evaporation in an aquarium system automatically throughout the day helping to avoid salinity swings our recommendation use a system that has reliable sensors ideally more than one sensor is preferred to prevent failure or overfilling also look for the failure of alerting when top off reservoir is low or empty so it does not burn out the pump. The ATO we're using on this system here is the uh, XP Aqua Ultimate. So this is a dual sensor system, oh, four sensor, I'm sorry. The Duetto is the, the yep. dual sensor. So great system. Our tip, invest in, wrong tip there. Um, my oh tip. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> huh? uh, it's all good. Um, Again, our, my tip, don't forget about the ATO. We provide 
uh, auto top off reservoir with all of the Reef LX because it is absolutely critical to the stability of your system. Yeah. So they're not expensive. Plan for it. Buy one. XP Aqua is a great way to go. Yeah, use it from the get go. Get it right away because you're gonna as soon as you put water in your aquarium, you're gonna have top off. Um, and not only is it important for larger aquariums, it is extremely important for small ones too, mm -hmm. um, because a little bit of uh, evaporation can mean a lot in a small aquarium. So really, off the bat, it's important for all yep. aquariums. All right. So our next thing that you're going to be talking about and need is a heater. So the purpose is maintain the aquarium water temperature within one to two degree degree, degree range. Recommendation. <clears throat> Base the wattage of your heater on total system water, system water volume and how many degrees you need to raise the water temperature and not just display water volume. Too small of a heater will run constantly, have a greater chance of failure or electrical issues. Too large of a heater will turn on and off too regularly, which will result in a reduced lifespan. For the model using for the Reef LX320.7, we're using two Finex 500 watt titanium heaters with controllers. For tips for this, when possible, go with a titanium or shatter resistant heater. These will last longer. It will not have the chance of being cracked by accidental contact with other equipment or handling. So with heaters, there's a lot of them that are glass. There's going to have a chance something knocks into them. There's a temperature fluctuation. For some reason, it cracks. You're going to have a lot of higher chance of electric electrocution of your aquarium. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, invest in a good one that's shatter resistant. I love titanium heaters. They're very easy to keep clean. They usually have a controller, which is going to be even more precise for you. Yeah. And you need it right away because your temperature has to stay even from the very beginning. Yeah, temperature is extremely important. And again, I, I suggest just like a, just really like any any type of equipment on an aquarium, don't try not to go cheap. Go with a brand that's rep, rep, reputable. Mm -hmm. And uh, the heater's one that you don't want to skimp on. Yep. All right. And our next thing is. Electrical needs. This is a big one that we will go in full detail in our next episode, but um, what you want to think about here, so the purpose is to ensure that you have adequate electricity and can safely power the aquarium. We, rec we recommend having cable ties, cable concealers, zip tie mounts, and uh, reputable surge protectors on hand. So this is a big deal. This particular system that we're setting up, I think draws just around 3000 watts total. That means so your typical 15 or 20 amp circuit's not going to work for it. So um, we'll be using the built-in controller box included with 320.7 along with supplies bought online. And here you go, there's some tips here as well. Average four foot aquarium draws around 1,000 watts. Typical 15 amp circuit can handle about 1,400. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty easy to start overloading your home if you're not careful. The best way to make sure that you have sufficient power for your large aquarium system is to hire an ele a certified electrician. Um, and our estimated water draw on this system is going to be at 2,200 watts. Again, hire an electrician. Yes. If you're not an electrician, hire one. <laughs> this, this is a huge investment. You want to make sure that you have the proper electricity. It can cause you huge, not only for the safety of your home and your mm -hmm. family, but um, the inhabitants as well in the aquariums. So. Yeah, don't be a hero. Get an electrician. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, so that kind of tells you like what to look for, what you got to plan for, for equipment, for a larger aquarium. You can take those same principles and use it really on any size aquarium. And again, if you guys have questions, please post them below. That is why we're live here, so that you can pick our brains. Can't get to every question, we'll try to get to as many as we yeah, can. Yeah, to pull as many as they can within time. <laughs> we're giving away a $100 gift card at the end of the show. So stick around for that. But I think we also we have should, a bonus yeah, entry code. Yeah, about to say we should drop a bonus code. I have the cheat sheet here. Oh. Should I show it to them? Oh no. Should I show it? Oh, we're gonna oh, have people coming oh, after oh. you for that cheat. <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and put in, give you guys the bonus word of the week. Maybe yes. Give me a second. Yeah. All so, right. <laughs> so the the bonus entry code this week, you guys, is Reef LX. Um, Makes sense. I like it. Yep. <laughs> so Reef LX, go over to waterboxaquariums.com forward slash huge. Punch that in, along with doing all the other social actions, getting some swag, you're going to get more entries, more chances to win that $4,000 aquarium. Awesome. 
a no-brainer. Yep, at some point that gift card's getting given away as well. Remember to be active in the comments, ask some questions, answer some questions. Um, we got a lot of people talking in here, so I'm sure they've been sorting through the questions being put out there yeah. to find some good ones. Oh man, shout out to Shane, Jacob, Clyde, Oliver, Paul, Chris. We have so many. Reef Bell, Tim. It, Oliver's with, here with us every time we're live, so Dude, we appreciate Oliver, that, my friend. you're committed. You're in here all the time, and you're talking, and you're giving questions and answers and stuff, so um, definitely say we see his name every single stream, which is awesome. Yeah, thanks for being with us. Got a lot of people with us here today. Lots um, of questions. I can't even keep track of them, so that's their job. Yeah. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> my tablet died, so I'm looking at my phone. Oh, no. <laughs> I forgot to turn it, it off. Oh, it's okay. Womp, right. womp. So I'm excited. So all the equipment is going into place on the LX soon. I know it's right over there. It is. We'll show you a picture a of that. that too, um, right? Yeah, we'll show you a video of all the equipment that we just talked about that's going mm -hmm. onto the LX. It's quite impressive. Um, but that's all going to go in there because next week we're going to talk about controller boards, cable management, and electrical and stuff. So, we're ready Super for questions. important topic. They're going to come slow, but they're going to come. Here's the first one. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Oliver, our friend. Hey, there he is. <laughs> What's the difference between the G5 Blue and the G5 Pro? Great question. Yeah, just your color spectrum so you can have more of a blue amount. There's more blue LEDs in the blue and than the Pro. Yeah. So, I mean, you, they're fully controllable either way, but it's kind of if you want more of a blue look or a little bit more of a white look, you're going to have more controllability on those two spectrums with the different lights. Yeah, historically, a lot of people that were using the Radeons would always shift over to that blue spectrum. So what they figured they'd do, they'd put more wattage toward that blue mm -hmm. spectrum and create a separate light that's just yeah. for the people that really like that. I love it, that's what we use on the frag. I'm a big We're gonna fan be of using blue. it on this 322. Yeah. If you want more controllability, you wanna play with the color temperature, go with the Pro. Yeah. Yeah, so we have four of those going on there. It's gonna be bright, oh, but man. it's a big tank, so you're gonna have to. But it's gonna. I can't wait to sh put those on for the first time, even if it's empty. Uh, we have Peter says, "Would you recommend having GFI outlets for aquariums?" Yes, you yeah. should. It's better than frying stuff, right? Yeah, if you yeah. can, where you're plugging in your aquarium to the wall, ideally, if possible, that's a GFI. And also, you can even put GFI breakers uh, back where your breakers are as well. That's yeah. double the protection, and. Also, drip loops as well. Just look it up. We'll talk about it next week. Mm -hmm. um, drip loops so you don't have any water going into your You don't want to start a fire. No, it's yeah. so incredibly You'd important. rather have your aquarium <laughs> shut off because yeah. something tripped and have everything shut down than have something trigger and then you end up with something on fire, cord burning, like something like that. That's yeah. it cutting off, you know, is a much better scenario. Yep. Thank you, Peter. Shane says, why no UV? I don't, do just, UV, yeah. I don't do UVs on reefs. Um, fish onlys, all for it, go for it. Um, I think a UV in a reef tank does take away too much of the beneficial stuff. You're looking for copepod, larva, um, you know, all the microfauna and stuff that goes in there. If I think you get your livestock from appropriate places, quarantine if you need, um, you know, and use proper husbandry so you don't have algae problems, that there is no actual need for it. But I you're making too sterile of an environment. Yeah. A reef is an ecosystem, that, a very complex ecosystem too, that you're trying to achieve, and you don't want something that sterilizes um, some of the, the biological things that you want in there and microfauna and stuff. And I'm sure there will be a big debate on that, but that is my preference. It always has been, so yep. that's how we do it. Clyde says, this is some <laughs> this is some good summarized info. Is the info available on the website? Well, because you asked, it most certainly will be. It will. Right? Yeah. The video will be part of our Reef LX build series. Yeah, yeah. So we'll also publish the presentation part of this as, as part of our uh, build series. But I don't see why we can't publish that PDF or you know slideshow as well yeah so we have I mean, we have if you go to like the youtube channel and you look through our uh, like our albums and stuff like that you'll yeah. have one that's tutorials you can follow the reef lx so they're gonna have we have video from each of these week's episodes drop that has the information into it that you can kind of sort through and and 
see the whole setup as we go. So that's going to be in there mm -hmm. um, that you can go to anytime. Also, Clyde, if you hop over to our website, majority of the products already have what's called blueprints. That kind of lays out the equipment that we suggest yeah. for them as well. So that's a second way that you can do it. We're going to be adding some improvement, improvements to that in the near future. So Awesome. Trina says, I've seen people use reef tanks as freshwater tanks before. So it is, a, is it a waste to use the Reef LX as a freshwater tank? Um, no, because it's beautiful. So um, it's bigger than the other rimless uh, aquariums that we have. So if you're looking for something large, it's a great choice for that. Large sump, it still means better water volume. You can control your flow. It's going to surface skim and clean really well. Um, I think freshwater works amazing in saltwater systems. Yeah, I would love to see you guys please set these up as a freshwater. I would love to see You can that. have some of your more monster fish in there, but you're yeah. going to have the filtration um, and the flow and stuff that you would want in those. Plus, just the fact of, you know, you get up to seven foot with, you know, 30 inches. It's going to make a beautiful aquarium, freshwater or saltwater. Yeah. For sure. Chris says, where do you guys place your ATO? The sensor should always, oh, this is one of the tips that was not there. Ah. The sensor should always go in where the return pump is because that's the only place the evaporation is going to occur. Um, so place your sensor there, and then usually your water that's coming in from the ATO should be dropping in pretty close to that so that you don't have it filling, and it's a delayed response letting the, the sensor know that it's filling. Um, so always place it there. That goes through an all-in-one system, too. All right, those are the 40 questions. All right, awesome. Good questions. Um, you know, definitely, we, we read through a lot of them. We're working on always doing more content and stuff, so we'll cover more topics and things as we go. This was kind of a summarized of each type of equipment. You're going to see as we set up the LX that we're going to show a little bit more time with the skimmer and flow, return pumps, and stuff like that, so you're going to get more in-depth look at all of that stuff. This is just like, hey, here's what you need to prepare your aquarium. Yeah. have these things you know, I also suggest out. to you guys if you don't get your question answered here live after this streams over post it down in the comments you know we try to get to as many of those as we can because yeah. they're you know we can actually reply directly to them so post it in the comments and most importantly smash that like button it's mandatory here on water it Box is mandatory <laughs> we're not asking we're telling you but in all seriousness <laughs> we appreciate it if you do it helps us out a tremendous amount yes it does it shows shows us support but also helps make sure we're seen as needed um yeah. and i think we have a gift card to give away we do too do we have a video of the equipment? oh yeah of the, what? the equipment, equipment. Yes, can we do it after the gift card? Okay, sure gift can. card first, and then we're going to look at our big stack of equipment. So, all right, we ready? Winner is... Ta -da 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 -da. Winner is Oliver, Oliver Richmond. Richmond. There you go. Congratulations. Wow. Congratulations, Oliver. Email winners at waterboxaquariums.com. We'll get you hooked up. Again, we appreciate you being here every week. See, it pays to it be pays to watch on Waterbox every show <laughs> and always talking to us. Thank you so much, Oliver. Um, congratulations. So, I got all the equipment out. Because we're going to start putting it onto the LX, you know, with next week is cord management. So check out this nice, Look at that beautiful skimmer. stack. Um, those boxes for the MP60s are not small, and they look small next to the protein skimmer. Uh, yeah. We've got the Ultimate ATO, two MP60s, the big old Quantum 300. See that wine glass shape? It's so it's clean and very, pretty. very, very nice. That's it's the a, only time it's going to be clean. Yeah, it was, <laughs> I know. If only it stayed that pretty. It Dual so pumps pretty. in that guy, too. Yeah. Um, here's your Vector L2. And then we have the RMS kits as well as four Radeon XR30 Blues. Those things are going to be cranking. Yeah, it's going to be beautiful. This tank is going to be just like the ultimate. Top of the line. So it was like Christmas beautiful. today. Mm -hmm. Got all these out, opened them set them up just to kind of start envisioning the greatness that's about to happen. Yeah, and you guys are going to be here to watch all of it. Um, I do want to mention that next week, again, you guys, we're, we're focusing on electrical and cable management, so we're going to mm. give you a detailed look into all the things you need to consider when you're setting up a big tank like this. Things Super no one important. is excited about, but you got to do it. Yes, it's not the most exciting topic. But it's not fun to do. It's <laughs> a little daunting for most, but it's really important because it's the first step to getting water and livestock in your tank. Yeah, and doing cord management and getting everything clean and set up before there's water everywhere and all that stuff, it's, gonna, it's the easiest time to do it. 
you got to get everything clean. It's going to be easy to maintain stuff, you know, and have your controllers and plugs and all that organized. It does make a big difference um, versus having a nest of cords that's behind your aquarium and you're trying to unplug things to figure out what it is. So as much as it's not fun to do, it is really important. And it's a great time to do it before your tank is up and running. Yeah, and you will thank yourself later on, I promise you. Yeah. So definitely tune in next Thursday at 1 p.m. for that. We'll be discussing so. it live. <laughs> I believe right. so. Yeah, Thursday, where, where back to we? Thursday. Where are we? <laughs> we're, we're good? Are we good? Yeah, where are you go? Huh? Is there, are we missing something? No, no. <laughs> we said we'll be here next Thursday. We're like, maybe, because we're here yeah. today, Friday. <laughs> we're here congratulating all of you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we should be here. Yes, we'll be here there Thursday. See you next right, week. Thank bye, you. Guys. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to our channel, Turn on those notifications and for more information on this series, visit waterboxaquariums.com forward slash huge. Tune in live every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to learn about how you can get more entries to our Reef LX 190.4 giveaway. Plus, we're giving away $100 gift cards every episode, but you have to be with us here live to win. Thanks for watching. See you next week.